welcome to the wrestling show that's not just for wrestling fans. This is Smart and Friends on lovewrestling.ca. My name is Zach and I'll be your host. Every once in a while, I find myself a guest for the show that fits the spirit like a glove. And in this case, he fits the spirit like a singular white glove. You see, recently you might have seen this clip go viral. It's been circulating all over the internet. He got in a bit of a fight in the streets of Las Vegas. Uh, someone picked a fight with him and my guest gracefully subdued him. It was great stuff. Now, this could have been any other fight in Las Vegas, but the reason that this one went viral is because my guest happened to be dressed as Michael Jackson at the time. And he was dressed as Michael Jackson because he works as a Michael Jackson impersonator for working for the MJ Live Show, which is soon moving to the uh, the Tropicana. And uh, not only that, he's not only a Michael Jackson impersonator, he is also a professional wrestler. So you see what I mean? He's a perfect fit for the show. I am welcoming Santana Jackson to today's episode of Smart and Friends. We're going to talk wrestling. We're going to talk MJ Live. And of course, we're going to talk about the, the events leading up to the fight and the fallout there. Of. But before I get to that, it's a great talk. You're going to want to hang around, but I got to thank the good people who help make things possible here at Love Wrestling. We save balls. Bit of a mantra for the people at manscaped.com. Let me talk about uh, talk to, uh, about them to you for a minute here. Support for Love Wrestling is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Let me put my notes down for a second and actually show you what I'm talking about. Look at this sleek design here. The man, this is the lawnmower 4.0. It's got anti-nick technology, which is going to help you prevent nicks and cuts. Listen to it in action. Sounds great. Looks great. It's got a little flashlight if you happen to be uh, grooming in the dark, as it were. Uh, whatever you need to do, the Lawn Mower 4.0 is, is the product that is going to help you keep things clean, fresh, and sparkly. Let's go with sparkly. Uh, join the over four. You know, don't, don't go with sparkly. Uh our partners at Manscaped would not commit to that, that language, I'm sure. But you can join the over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer from us. You're going to get 20% off your order, plus free shipping. Wherever you are in the world, you're going to get free shipping, providing you use our promo code LOVEWRESTLING at manscaped.com. Do so. Visit manscaped.com. Promo code Love Wrestling. Your balls will thank you. Our talk with Santana Jackson right after this message. Yo! We're the Boros Twins. I'm the world's sweetest man, Gentleman Jervis. This is God's gift to wrestling, Michael Richard Blaze. This is Chelsea Green. And we love wrestling. And I love wrestling. And I love wrestling. And I love wrestling. Oh, we're going to see a super fuck powerball! Just coming up to the building, Colton Kelly. Colton, I am sorry to interrupt your cigarette, my friend. If they weren't the MVPs of this, of uh, you know, pandemic wrestling, then I, then I honestly don't know who, who are. Of course, we did want to give everybody a bit of a rundown on what you can expect here on Love Wrestling through 2021 and beyond. This crowd is going bananas! I'm Spencer Love, and this is Love Wrestling. And we are back. Joining me today, he's an independent wrestler, Michael Jackson impersonator, and repeat viral internet sensation, Santana Jackson. How you doing tonight, friend? Yeah. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Uh, and again, like I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. I understand it's been a bit of a heavy few days of travel, and I understand you just got off a really interesting flight. Yeah, I uh, was almost going to be here on time, so I had more time to relax and actually do the face for you guys, but... Uh... We had a commotion on the plane, so they had to remove some guy. I guess I don't know what he was doing, but I was offering to get rid of him. They needed me to. <laughs> I was like, you know, I could probably remove him the, the right way, you know, nice and talk to him. But I don't know. Some guy was going nuts back there. So they let us all out. And um, it took a little bit longer for me to get here, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> I mean, if they had let you, like, handle things yourself, you would have been a, a viral sensation all over again. In the, it would have happened second. again on the plane this time. I'm like, this guy, Michael Jackson, removes the guy off a of plane. Not even as Michael this time. Just probably with the fedora on, the hat, and glasses, maybe, you know. Come yeah, I, you'll you'll have like a couple people smart on the internet. It's like, wait a second, I think I saw that guy take down someone on uh, in that Vegas clip, didn't I? I'm about to become a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, your Michael Jackson impression is so strong. Cause so I, I feel like I need to apologize in advance because as I was doing my notes and uh, researching for this episode, more than once I wrote I wrote Michael down, and I feel like I might say it out loud during this podcast. So for that, I apologize in advance. You're good. <laughs> uh, so the age-old question: What came first, the Michael Jackson impersonating or the professional wrestling? Really, they collide together. Um, I started <laughs> yeah. with both, really, because as as a, as a young age, I love Michael's music, and I love the physicality of wrestling. So you know, I had a brother. So you know, me and my brother always wrestled around. So uh, <laughs> look what I learned. <laughs> you know, like, he older he brother like wrestling. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, older brother or younger brother? brother? I have a younger brother. Yeah. Okay. My younger brother used to used to get thrown around the house a little bit, you know, playing around <laughs> with me. Um, but no, I used to do a lot of dancing uh, into Michael stuff. Uh, I went to show and tell for school. It was like, you know, when you come in and you show what you do, I used to bring in everything and anything. Um, but I, I came in as Michael and did Billie Jean. And, you know, it was my first time I ever did it. I could tell you, I didn't know the words too much to it, but I knew the beat. I knew Michael's music and I didn't really understand it because I was young. So I was still didn't really understand him like that. But I loved the music and what he was doing. So the dancing, of course, always caught my eye. That's so cool. I, I want to do that. <laughs> uh, man, it just took a while. I, I think I started working with Michael before I jumped into wrestling after a couple of years, I think, because I I know about wrestling classes. I didn't know much about that. I just thought, it's on TV. That's how you get to see it, you know? But um, I started doing uh, this Michael stuff everywhere. I used to perform for Thrill the World. It was a worldwide event where everybody comes together to do a thriller dance at the same time. So uh, Right. I got to start it off. I got to do like three songs. This is how I used to look without the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do it like this, and they, they, they kind of let me perform and do stuff for them. And uh, I was doing like like different parties, uh, convention center stuff, and picking up from the beach. And I decided to come to Vegas. And it kind of took off a little more from there, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> learn makeup, learn how to do all this extra stuff. So, I mean, I don't know what else. I mean, it's got a little, a little more fun right on. for me. In regards to professional wrestling, uh, maybe I'm mistaken here, but I understand that you work with uh, future stars of wrestling. Um, am I correct in understanding that they, uh, they're the people that you trained with for uh, for wrestling? Yes, I trained with the uh, FSW, Future Stars of Wrestling, for a while, and then um, I started training with uh, the Super Beast Training Compound right now. And okay. I'm learning with I'm learning with some new guys, uh, some bigger guys, <laughs> um, new stuff. So it's like it's, it's cool because I pick up from different schools. I don't just go to one; I go to different schools that I can find it learn something from each and every one of them, and then I kind of make my own feel about it. Okay, very cool, very cool. Um, jumping back into, the, like, the uh, Michael Jackson for, for a moment, like, how did you inevitably get your foot in the door with MJ Live? Uh, really hot. Oh, that started when, like I, when I said before, when I first got out here, I was homeless for a year. So wow. I didn't, have, I didn't have anything. I was just working off the tips and donations and off of whoever wanted to help me out. And, um... I just started working my way there, doing charity events, hospitals. I wound up uh, doing some uh, stuff for Win Win Entertainment. It was a nonprofit organization, so they were hiring me to go to the hospital, St. Jude Ranch. Not even hire me, but like asked me if I had time to do some charity for them. I would go and do it for everybody. And every year, they give me an award for like Painter of the Year, Performer of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, um, and then like another award just because I participate in everything they need me. And I never really said no to anything. So I would do the charity events, and then. I would work at night to make the money I need to get to stay in my apartment and stuff like that. And then sure. eventually, like, I think four years went by, and then MJ Live started noticing me. And because I would go to the show all the time, I wanted to be part of that show. And uh, okay, the other, the other Michael Jala saw me, and he's like, Hey, dude, you want to work the show? It's only me, I'm doing seven days a week. I'm like, Of course, I want to do it. So he threw me in for Fridays and Saturdays, and then it just took off. I was with them for five years now. And then when I actually got signed by them, like, or, you know, started working for them. And I was making a little bit more money is when I started to wrestle because I was able to work classes. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and like in regards to MJ Live, I understand it's gone through some uh, some a big venue change recently. Uh, I understand that it's uh, it's leaving the stratosphere and moving to the Tropicana, which is a pretty big venue, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's going to be a bigger stage, a lot more fun, a lot more action. Uh, you're going to see it like you haven't seen it before. So, you know, we have more space to do a little more crazy for you or more Michael for you. In other words. A nice it must have been moonwalk too. <laughs> <laughs> lots of space to do the uh, do the moonwalk. Oh yeah, need, I need the space. You know, I can't just do like three steps. It's not enough. <laughs> it must be I hard when you cross. do it. In... Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying I gotta go across the whole yard. You know. 
<laughs> Must be very limiting once you're in like a squared circle. Oh man, I still try to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly does. I bet I go to the corner of the corner somehow. I figure it out. I'll get some scribes in there for everybody to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, the show must be doing very well if it's moving to, to such a big, big venue. Was it, uh, were you privy to like what prompted the change? I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, the baby's getting ready to move. You know, it's time okay. to try a different venue a little closer to everybody. So, um, I mean, Tropicana's right there across from Manatee Bay, MGM, New York, New York. I mean, we're in a good spot. So hopefully it, just, it gives us a, uh, I don't know how you say it, just more shine. <laughs> sure, Everybody sure enough. I mean, it's not more shine. They can come see us better because, you know, we was on the end of the strip. Now we're, like, right there in the middle. You can come play with it. So. Okay, very cool. It must have, like, re uh, reinvigorated the performance, perhaps. Oh, I'm excited. We're opening back up on the 7th, so I know I'll be going back in to get some uh, rehearsal going. That's going to be fun. I'll probably do a little clips here, little bits and clips of me up there on stage, on the new stage, showing it off, of course. I'll be excited like a little schoolgirl. Ah! Right. <laughs> Maybe like not. I ah, said, he, he, he. All, all over the places. Ow! He, look at this, Tito, Jermaine. I'm over here. No, I'm over here now. I'm gonna see him. Look, I'm walking upside down. I have too much fun. I'll be in the aisles. I'll be in the seats. I mean, this is a good angle too. This is a great angle. I love this angle. I'm gonna check. I'll be in the back, in the front. This is too close. <laughs> Oh my goodness! You say too much fun. I don't think there's such a thing. Uh, uh, I make myself laugh, man. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> no, hey, I'm you, <laughs> you've popped me, man. That was good stuff. Um, in regards to like live musical performance and professional wrestling, um, I'm wondering if you think it has more in common uh, with one another or less in common than other people might think. Well, wrestling and dancing. You yeah, like live musical performance and whatnot. Um. You get it's two different worlds there, you know, but it's, it's similar in a way we're entertaining. You know, we're still trying to bring something cool, whether I'm, I'm not doing physical stuff, but, you know, I'm more and more of a, when I'm dancing, it's more like a, uh, being more athletic and just kind of moving around. Uh, sure. you know, so when it comes to with wrestling, it's more, you know, physical. We've got to really be taking some blows, learning how to take a hit, learn how to hit the ground. Um, but it's, it's kind of entertaining either way. I mean, it's it's an art. It's I think they all both art. You know, it's an art. You get to see through two, two different worlds, but it's entertaining. It's it's kind of it's how you how you bring it to you know how I present it to you. The wrestlers can present something to you that you can feel it. You, you feel like you want to cry. You feel like you, you want to get mad. You want to hate this guy. Same thing with our music when we're dancing. We'll, you cry for the she's out of my life. Uh, you'll cry for Man in the Mirror. But you'll be you cheer for Billy Jean. You know, uh, black or white. You know, you get you. They, they both give you uh, two different worlds, but the same kind of emotions you feel. Make very, well said. very well Sorry, said. Very well said. Sorry, I'm terrible at words. I'm trying my best. <laughs> oh, friend, this is a this is a marvelous uh, a marvelous conversation. Uh, I think that was a very well articulated thought, and uh, it's very thought provoking. I, I do like that. Uh, I do like that. To I do like to think of as a longtime pro wrestling fan. I do like to think of wrestling as an art. So, uh, hearing it echo, uh, echoed uh, by yourself as well, that's a beautiful sentiment. Thank you. Uh, now let's talk about the fight again. You went viral, like uh, you were on TMZ. You did the whole media circuit for this one. Uh, what provoked the fight to begin with? I, I don't even know, honestly. I was just um, performing. I was just uh, dancing literally to Smooth Criminal. I was in the white jacket. Um, and I was just doing my thing, and a guy walked up to me. And, um, I thought he was trying to talk to me. And he hits me. I lean in to uh. hear what he's saying. He hits me instead. My hat goes flying. I'm like. Okay, wait a second. Took the glasses off. Like, did you just hit me? Why are you hitting me? Whoa, and you're still hitting at me. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. What did I do to you? And I'm like, come on. You don't, you're not really serious, are you? I'm smiling. I'm trying to calm down. Like, don't do this. You don't want to do this. I don't want to do this to you. I'm not going to hit you. You hit me several times in my face. Caught me once, and then you caught me that little, little wowsy he had going on, kicking me. I'm like, okay. Okay. I'm like, all right. Now I can't let him hit me no more, but I'm not going to hit him. I knew something was wrong. Like, he wasn't coherent. Like, he wasn't. I knew he had out of been drunk on some on something or whatever it was. I just felt like I didn't want to punch this guy. I'm gonna hit this guy. I'm gonna hurt this guy. I'm gonna put him down. If I could put him and restrain him and hold him, I hold him. If I have to put him to sleep, I put him to sleep. But I just kind of held him, restrained him enough so that way he wasn't uh yanking on my hair anymore. Like I squeezed for a bit so he can let go of my hair and he let go and I able to hold his arm and. I just held him down. I, like I said, I was trying not to hurt the guy. I was working different moves. As I was on top of him, I was I was going to go for an arm bar. 
but I decided not to because I figured the way he was acting, if I went for an arm bar, I'm going to have to break his arm. Mm, and I, okay, yeah. That, that wasn't something I wanted to do. And then I was like, if I, went, I was going to go for a triangle because I wasn't sure if he's going to start biting me or something stupid like that. So I just figured, okay, let's just go straight for the headlock here. Twisted his head the other way so that way I could get him to lay flat. That's when my hand went underneath this way, turning his head, and I was able to get underneath him. Um, and basically, I was just defending myself. I wasn't trying to hurt the guy. I wanted him to maybe seek some help, maybe, but um, definitely wasn't trying to hurt him. Like, if I was trying to hurt him, it would have been a whole different story. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm trained by, I've learned a lot of different things from different places, you know, and I know how to put them all together. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, like, I, you know, I'm no. I, I have no fight experience, uh, trained or otherwise, but, uh, like, again, it looked like you just, yeah, like, you, you were completely defending yourself, and, like, you did right by him, uh, by, you know, just getting him off of you, and, yeah, and the whole thing, keep... you gotta stay calm in a situation like that, too. You see, if you watched me, I wasn't crazy. I was really calm and collective of what I was doing. I was thinking of taking my time with him while trying not to physically hurt the guy. Was there any, like, kind of follow-up from the, uh, from, like, local authorities or whatnot? I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, I've sent them my information, so we they they did uh, they press charges. So he is you know we take him to jail um, because if they're not, they would have let him go, and he was just got a fine and walked around, and then probably ran into because I wasn't gonna leave. I was there to um, make a little bit of money while my show moved to oh well, the show. I don't wanna say my show, but the show. Gotcha. <laughs> the show moved to <laughs> Tropicana. So um, yeah, I was figure I go out there, stay a little busy, have some fun. Keep uh, keep limber, keep moving around, keep uh, the crowd happy, keep learning what they like. One certain type <laughs> that makes them go, oh. <laughs> so, man, you were just like, I'll do that more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you were just like minding your own business, like uh, yeah. performing on the strip, right? Yeah. I was just, oh, my goodness. Thanks. Um, did you ever like speak to the person who caught the footage uh, that has now become this viral sensation? Yeah, he's he's uh, sent me the video and talked to me about it and stuff. I told him, I, was, I don't know what happened, but it went crazy. You know, thanks for catching the footage, I guess. But really, this not what I was looking forward to. It's not something I was trying to get. You know, I, I, just, I was defending myself. I'm not looking to go, oh, now he's on this. Now he's on that. Everyone, you see what this guy is? He's amazing. I'm like, no, I've been doing this for years. <laughs> you just happen to catch it on film. I'm like, that's the one time. Well, but no, I mean, I went viral last time for the Moonwalk DDT. I was like. Just keep eye on me. I got stuff behind me that no one knows yet. No one's seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> when I reached out to you, like I, I said this to you as well. Like I saw the Moonwalk DDT a, a few years ago. Uh, I think when I saw the clip, I thought it was like a like a, a wrestler who was just kind of like doing a one-off Michael Jackson thing. I hadn't realized it was like your full uh, in-ring persona, which is like, re which is really cool. So once you went viral again, and then like, uh, you know, I'm reading through the comments on like the Sean Ross sap speed uh, that, you know, this guy's a professional wrestler too. It's just, uh, it was mind blowing, very like small world, even though it's the big internet, internet, excuse me. Yeah. It's still a real tiny world. I feel like, <laughs> uh, so again, this clip goes viral. Everyone's reacting to it. They're having a laugh, uh, but also like they're kind of admiring your ground game. Like you know, you like you you know, you subdue them. You keep it peaceful. Um, I'm wondering if like through all the comments, through all the reactions, and uh, little bits of fan art you've been receiving, I'm just wondering if there's been any like uh, uh, reaction that has popped you. That's popped me. Yeah. Chavo Guerrero popped me. <laughs> well, oh yeah. Chavo Guerrero popped me. I messaged him and I saw that he put, he put up my thing and he showed me love and kind of shot me a message back, talking about um, just showing me respect. It was just like crazy. I, I can't word the word how he said it, but it was just something that it touched me. I was like, wow, that's coming from him it was a big deal for me. So I was like, wow, you know, I was a big Eddie Guerrero and Chavo fan when they, were, when they were doing anything. Of course, The Rock, I'm a big rock guy too. But like, I've always loved Eddie's charisma in the ring, how he was, his, the way he just wrestled. And it was like really cool for him. And then to have him say so to me, it was, it was another thing. And he's posting the video, too. Oh, man. Is this man. something that was, like, uh, in the public timeline, or is this, like, DMs and I shouldn't be uh, – I should mind my own business on this one? This is this was a little message on the side, but he posted stuff. He posted it, and, he, you know, he wrote a little something for me. But, yeah, he, just, he, he shot me a little message on the side. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I don't want to repeat it because I don't want to – Of course. You know, it was a self-message. You know, so if he put it on my post, and I would have said it. But, no, it was like – <laughs> It was just, just a message, uh, personal message. I thought it was real cool. So I was like, man, that's, that was awesome. 
I can absolutely respect that. Uh, now, again, this fight went viral uh, sometime last year. The Moonwalk DDT goes viral. Um, if there had been a, uh, if you had had to break up the fight on the airplane, I'm sure you would have went viral again. But how are you planning to break the internet next? I don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> you never know what's next. <laughs> <laughs> very, very. Hey, they might give me a one-off UFC Michael Jackson fight. I'll just fight a Santana Jackson. You know I'm a Michael Jackson person already. So you'll see me fight in the ring. <laughs> oh my goodness! I would like to see this. Absolutely. Um, I'll fight. No makeup this time. Maybe a little bit. Of makeup. <laughs> you gotta like live the gimmick a little bit in the UFC. Yeah, right? I gotta like, have a little bit of the makeup on, a little bit, just to show you know. <laughs> I mean, it's probably like the only like thing you could get away with wearing in the octagon. I'm sure like the the one glove would kind of be a little. Yeah, the ref would one probably have to check white. that. One of the gloves would be white, the other glove would be black. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, I already so, thought this through. <laughs> it's a good plan. I think Down we should. To the socks. <laughs> well, again, once you make it to the UFC, my bets will be uh, uh be. I don't know. I, I don't know what the common uh, betting phrases are. <laughs> I don't know how to bet. So, but my I money is on you. Either. I'm just hoping <laughs> to see what happens. And if they they ever say, "Hey, you want to do a fight against this guy? My my weight, my class. Let's do it." Dana White. <laughs> you see you heard I it have? here. <laughs> Um, so wrestling, like at large, it's had it's like it's, it's had a small share of Elvis impersonators. You've kind of been breaking ground as maybe like the first uh, Michael Jackson impersonator that I've seen. Um, just wondering if you think there's there maybe are other celebrities out there who you think might make a good gimmick or per, uh, persona for an upstart wrestler out there. A prince. Oh, good shout. Prince. Prince was amazing. I love to see someone. Uh, I love to take Prince on. So, you know. Uh, wrestle friends or Freddie Mercury. I know, I know, I know. There's a Lucha Freddie out there, the Freddie Mercury wrestler. Um, uh, I know you wrestled a Drake impersonator at one point. Yes, I did. Indeed, <laughs> I did. That was the time he that Drake was trying to put out that album with Michael's vocals on. Got front and got in trouble. So that was oh, like perfect. yeah, <laughs> perfect timing. Caught that DT and hee <laughs> out of here. Dude, yeah, that uh, I mean, like the rivalry is right there. He, uh, Drake, Drake, and his studio wrote it for you, right? And his name was Jarrell Nielsen. This side, okay. Him a shot. You know, what I'm saying, let him know that's that's the Drake. And if you want some, you can come get some again. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Um, last question I want to hit you with. Um, just wondering if, like, if there are any other ma uh, major. Pr excuse me, I'm going to start from the beginning on this one. Are there major? Ooh, sorry, tripping over my words. You'll have to excuse me. That is all, folks. <laughs> oh boy, I I earned that one. Um, I'm just wondering what major promotions uh, in North America or otherwise that you think a Michael Jackson impersonator would be a great fit. Man, I would love to work with any any anyone. Like just you know, I love performance. So whether whether I get picked up by you know like the uh, WWE were to pick me up or AEW, I know I couldn't do the gimmick and full makeup. So I'll still keep, obviously, the look and, uh, you know, pretty much as much as I can without trying to get in trouble from the family. Unless they give me permission, then that'd be awesome, too. If I got the permission from the family, then it'd be a whole different world. Naturally, naturally. Santana Jackson, I thank you very kindly for your time this evening. Uh, before I let you go, please let the audience know where to follow you on social media and, any, uh, and your YouTube links as, as well. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Blank. And he wants to tell you where to follow me at. You can follow Santana Jackson. So cute. Santana.jackson7 on Instagram. That's what you can find. Santana.jackson7. That's Insta. And then on Twitter, it's SJMoonwalkDDT. That's right, Blackie. You tell him. That's right. Good boy. Let me go over here. And then Santana Jackson on Facebook. You want something some more? Oh, you don't need to fight. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, just follow me. Santana Jackson. You can follow me everywhere. Or you just look me up on, um, like I said, Instagram, Santana.jackson7. Facebook, Santana Jackson. Twitter, uh, I think it's uh, Santana Jackson or no S J Moonwalk D D T. Sorry, I don't know my own stuff. I don't do this a lot, you know. But <laughs> follow me, and I'll follow you back. Ow! No. <laughs> well, again, that was a marvelous sign up made all the better by the uh, guest appearance by your uh, adorable, adorable dog. That's my boy Blanket. <laughs> Great name. Thank you very much, Santana. For having me. Well, let me tell you something, everyone. 
If you go over to manscaped.com, right this moment in time, right now, you, you can save 20, 20% off of your next purchase at manscaped.com. But how am I going to save 20%, I hear you ask? Well, let the wordsmith tell you. Because if you enter promo code love wrestling, that's right, love wrestling, you can see it down here, you can see it scrolling across the screen. Enter promo code love wrestling and save 20% off of anything you find on that website. And also, you'll get free shipping. How crazy is that? 20% off. to thank you because, like the headline says, at manscaped.com, we save balls. And it's just too sweet. Let me ask you something. Do you like this shirt? I really hope you do. Live, laugh, love wrestling. Uh, I hope you do because I actually designed it. If you want to get your own live, laugh, love wrestling shirt, it's available exclusively at lovewrestling.ca slash shop. Uh, Got to give props to Warren Diesel Barris and Thaddeus Archer III, who, uh, who inspired uh, this little shirt uh, in my conversation with Warren on uh, Smart and Friends a few months back. They have a little bit of a rivalry that's blossomed out of a humble little live, laugh, love sign. And uh, well, that's kind of encouraged this t-shirt design that you see before you today. Thank you so much to Santana Jackson for taking the time to speak with me today. Great talking to you, friend. If you ever want to come back onto the show, please consider it an open door to come on back. Um, if you like what you heard today, please head over to ratethispodcast.com slash lovewrestlingca. You're not going to be reviewing just the Smart and Friends podcast. You're going to be also reviewing uh, pretty much any, everything that's being created here at lovewrestling.ca. Uh, and we're, it's being created very proudly. So we hope you're enjoying it, whether you're tuning into Smart and Friends, whether you're tuning into B- Between Two Beards, Power Out, NXT, Sunday Brunch, uh, new programs like the Friend and Foe Show with Cody Defoe, and upcoming content like uh, Cheap Pop with Lawrence. Uh, and I, of course, I'd be remiss uh, not to mention uh, probably the cornerstone, the flagship of the of the whole network, and that's of course Spencer Love interviews. Uh, if you want to follow on, on me on social media, please do so. You can see it ticking along the bottom of the screen. If you're watching it on video uh, on Twitter, I'm I'm at Smartmouth. On Instagram, I'm Smart dot mouth uh and if you want to follow love wrestling ca you can do so on twi- uh, on twitter on instagram on facebook and on tiktok all same handle love wrestling ca thanks so much for catching my conversation with santana jackson i'm going to be back next week till then friends